Welcome everybody. Today on More Phantom May, I'm going to be reviewing One Piece Odyssey for the Xbox. Oh yeah! I just beat this game today. Uh, which says a lot. It does, because I bought this game on the release in January, I believe, which seems crazy to me that this game has been out since January, and I just beat it in the beginning of September. And, uh, you know, some excuses can be made. Uh, other games coming out, uh, getting my attention. Me being a busy adult person who has to do adult things that keeps me away from video gaming all the time. But I always find time in my day to game, people. And uh, as you know, One Piece is life. One Piece is the greatest story ever told. And uh, I'm just a little disappointed in One Piece Odyssey, to be honest with you. Uh, was it a good game? Yes. Was it a great game? No. Was it worth? Uh, God knows how much I paid for it and the DLC. No way, Jose. What I recommend here, forth and beyond, is to wait for a sale. Just throwing that out there right now. I, I think the game is worth playing once. But uh, this is the first One Piece game that I beat, uh, both the main story and DLC, just to say I did it, and I uh, completely deleted it off of my Xbox to make more room for other games, because uh, it just doesn't appeal to me as something I'd like to play again. Mostly because it's more repetitive than a One Piece Warriors or, or Pirate Warriors game. Easily more repetitive than that. And uh, that is saying something. Because one of the biggest complaints about uh, Muso games, uh, uh, Warriors games, is the fact that they are repetitive. And I swear to Jesus that uh, One Piece Odyssey just is continuously the same thing over and over and over and over. And it's just the same attacks, the same animations, over and over and over. And, and the harder the bosses get, the longer you got to continuously use the same moves because you got to use the strongest moves to win the fight. There's not much strategy in this strategy game, which makes me sad. Uh, if you've been following me long enough, you'll know that turn-based strategy is my favorite genre in all the video game world. And yet, One Piece Odyssey, that which should be the dream One Piece game for this guy, really fell short. Uh, it, it, it's it's average at best. It's baby's first RPG, I guess, uh, or, or, or turn-based strategy game. It it feels kind of like Dragon Quest Eleven, yet dumbed down a bit, which is just sad. And. It's not even just that. I think I could have looked past the gameplay aspect if the story was good. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the story was not very good. It was a half-assed Xenoverse-style video game where we're going into the memories of our One Piece characters, our main Straw Hat crew, and we're going to to see the highlights, I guess. We're going to the most popular locations in all of One Piece, uh, Alabasta, Water 7, Ennis Lobby, uh, Marineford, Dressrosa, you know, the greatest hits. It's really just a series of the greatest hits of One Piece in a turn-based uh, Dragon Quest style game. And uh, I, I just think that they chose the wrong locations. If they're going to do some kind of stupid memory thing where we're not going to invent some cool uh, video game original character to fight or video game original uh, cast to, to interact with, we only really get two original characters in this entire game. Which is freaking crazy to me in a One Piece game. If you guys played One Piece World Seeker... I did, and I really enjoyed it, and everybody told me it was bad. I really enjoyed One Piece World Seeker. The gameplay was pretty damn good, once you've unlocked all the uh, abilities. Uh, and I don't want to turn this into a World Seeker 
review, but it, it, it's really fun once you've gotten past the beginning where you're kind of uh, dumbed down so you can unlock the skill tree. But the story was uh, enthralling. There was some fun in that story, some really cool character moments. The graphics were well done. The cutscenes were well done. This game, One Piece Odyssey, felt so like stick figure, like you're playing with uh, action figures. The, the faces were always the same, like, hi, Luffy, what are we going to do next? I don't know. Let's go that way. Okay, let's walk over there, and then we'll go get that thing. And a lot of fetch quests where you're like, okay, go get that thing, or go beat that guy over there, but then come back here. No, And you can't, at the beginning of the game... Uh, for majority, especially of the Alabasta part of it, you're you're going from one end of the desert, and then you have to walk all the way back to the other end of the desert, and then possibly back again. That's what it felt like to me. It was such a slog, especially at the beginning. And um, at no point did it get exciting. The enemy was so boring. The enemy didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And they even tried to incorporate some kind of uh, storyline in the main timeline in the memory island that you're on when you're not in, you know, going into the Straw Hats worlds that's, that don't really matter. They tried to incorporate kind of some kind of story involving the Gorosei, the Five Elders, and Smoker. I, I'm not sure if they're uh, trying to make it seem like Smoker's related to the main villain, Adio. This guy, I fucking hated Audio. What a boring fucking villain. He was basically there just supporting you. You guys should beat these giant golems. Yeah, beat these golems. And, and then go into your memories and get your memories back. <laughs> and trust me, I'm a good guy. Uh, he, he was obviously the villain because there was really nobody else to, to deal with. And, and like I said, repetitive Consistently repetitive. Uh, you have these abilities that you can use, the you know, gum gum pistol, etc. Uh, onigiri, the main um, crew's attacks. Uh, characters like Brooke and Frankie get fucking sidelined for a majority of the game. You have to unlock them by getting about halfway through the game. First Frankie and then Brooke shows up at the last two arcs or so. Or episodes or chapters, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I, I just felt cheated. I did, because this game had so much potential. It did. And I, I, uh, I, I don't want to jump to the end here, but I think that it, it, at best, is a 5 out of 10. Or a 2 out of 5, really. Like, I wouldn't even give it a 6. I wouldn't say that it did not do anything that impressed me to the point where I would ever go back to it. If it come out with, <laughs> if it comes out with another season of DLC, I will probably get it and play it and hope that they fixed some of these issues. Because the DLC that did come out, uh, which I can't even remember the name of it right now, uh, was also very lame. It was just like the evil version of the girl that you were helping out in the main storyline you have to deal with her and then this giant stupid ass cube that's apparently a some kind of an ancient weapon of sorts from a sky island that fell to earth that's basically what i got there oh, let me just break down the story real quick uh with just the top of my head break down the story so you're the straw hat crew right you're in the air it's really cool uh, well-edited cutscene, well-designed, uh, really good graphics at the beginning. Cool shit's happening. You're like, Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Nico Robin, Nami, Frankie, Brooke. The whole squad's here except for Jinbei because this game has been in development before he joined the crew. Um, and uh, they crash land on this island of Memoria. I think it was called. Uh, or maybe the place you go is Memoria, and I'm not sure. I really could not give a shit what the island was called by the end of the game. They they show up, they're wandering around, Luffy's trying to find his crew. You slowly put your crew back together, and then you have to go find Nami, who's being held captive by these giant creatures. I was a little worried that we were going to have to fight these giant monsters, other than fighting like marines and pirates and whatnot, but that doesn't last too long. You just fight them really on this island. Uh, you beat them. It's kind of fun at the beginning. You're like, ooh, this is neat. I hope it does more than this. And then it really just doesn't. It gives you more attacks. Uh, I was sad that there's only two outfits per character except Usopp, who also gets his Sniper King outfit 
if you order the DLC. It's just kind of lame. Why would you put a outfit changing uh, component into this game if you're not going to have at least two or three, four outfits per character or customizable outfits? I think every character should have had every outfit pre-time skip at least uh, especially post time skip, especially all the movie outfits they wear. This this story is full of outfit changes, and they give us the pre time skip outfits, and the post time skip outfits, and then the sni sniper king outfit, as mentioned. And that's it. That is it. I had to Google it three times, be like, is this really all the outfits you get? Not that it matters towards the gameplay or the story, which it really doesn't. But it would have helped to have different things to look at. Or to unlock like there's really no uh, Reason to wander around and do side things because there's nothing to unlock y y y If you level up too high the game's too easy So I found myself midway through the game avoiding fights at, at, Like the plague so I didn't get too strong because every fight was so easy press the a button press the a button press the a button the game even puts a, a fast forward button in the battle mode because they know it's repetitive as shit and they know that you want to get through these fights so you can get to the main story the meat and potatoes which aren't good they're like microwaved meat and potatoes the story again bad crew lands they get themselves back together you find out that the ship's damaged so frankie's got to stay behind to fix the ship brooke is brooke's body has sunken into the ocean and we can't get it without uh, a part of the sunny to go get it the the submarine thing or some shit so both brooke and frankie outs and you got your crew by the way you don't even get pre-time skip uh frankie's outfit even though he's in the fucking game and you get to interact with pre-time skip frankie in memoria but you can't play with him even though he's in the game with his own abilities and own attacks kind of fucked up i love pre-time skip frankie um, so the crew loses their memories after they run into this girl named Lim, who lives on this island, who, who touches them and takes away their memories and their abilities. Like Luffy forgets how to fucking wipe, wipe his own ass. And then the, the crew, uh, deals with this girl and Adio shows up, her, her keeper, her best friend, her bestie, this dude with, uh, long gray hair. I, I didn't really like his design at all. He takes you back to his, uh, Tarzan tree house. And they explain that audio has taken, or that Lean has taken all your memories and abilities. And now you've been reduced down to level one. So we're going to have to work our way back up to level 50 or some shit. So we need to go into your memories and we need to go into this memory world. And guess what the first one is? It's Alabasta, baby. Which is cool because you get to see the, the, uh, the fucking ship, the going merry, and, and that's cool and a, a touching moment. It, it doesn't really matter to me too much because they don't linger on it too much. You don't get to pilot any of the ships, which is kind of lame. I, if you remember in uh, Dragon Quest XI, you do get to f pilot the ship on the, on the open sea, but you don't get to do that here, which is fine, I guess. You deal with uh, old opponents like uh, Mr. Two and crocodile and that's about it there's really no other uh main villains that gets to show up that's another thing it's like we're gonna go through these highlights the the top diggity arcs in the entire series uh, to the fandom we're gonna go through the 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 best moments that people remember and we're not gonna include all the villains and we're not going to include any of the female villains like uh, Miss All Sunday, which comes in the DLC later. I know that. But I can't believe we had to wait till the DLC to see Miss All Sunday. I really wanted to see All Sunday and Nico Robin interact, which again, we get in the DLC. But it seems like a little too little too late for me because it should have been in the main story. Uh, so you're, you fight Mr. Two, but you don't get to see Mr. One. You don't get to see Miss Doublefinger. You don't get to see Mr. Five, Miss Valentine, uh, Miss Merry Christmas, Mr. Four. None of those characters are in this game. I would understand if Miss Merry Christmas, Mr. Four were gone, but we got Miss Doublefinger and Mr. One. Come on. Mr. Three should be in this game. I'm saying it should be in this game if you're gonna go to alabasta give us alabasta don't give us 
Just Mr. Two, which I'm happy we got to see Bone Clay. I am. I love Bone Clay. Also, you can't use any other characters. Like, Vivi is in Alabasta, and she's with you, but you can't use her as a even a healer. She can't, she's not even involved in any of the fights, which is fine, I guess. She's not a main fighting type of a person, uh, but she knows how to battle it out. I, I think it would have been cool if you could unlock some of these characters, even if you could only use them in Memoria, because at some point you get to work with Sabo, Wa, Vivi, just old teammates. I think you fight Smoker at some point in the mem memory world. I mean, even him as a, as a usable character would have been something different. And I wouldn't have cared if we didn't get to do that, if the main Straw Hat crew had some uniqueness to them other than just using the spamming the same attacks over and over again, because otherwise you're just striking with similar attacks that just get boring as well, that don't do any damage. So you're basically constantly re rebuilding your, 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 your attack ability because you have your health bar and then your uh, special attack bar. You want to keep that up, your TP, so that you can use your special abilities because that's the only way you can actually do actual damage to these villains that you just want to beat to move on to the next part because you're hoping the next part's going to be more entertaining, which it's really not because after you beat Crocodile, you have to fight him again. Because then he gets jacked up by memory power or some shit. You beat Crocodile again. Same fight. Nothing different about it. Uh, then you go to Water 7 and you do the same thing. And you fight Luchi and Kaku. But guess who's not there? Yeah. Caulifla. Baluno. Uh, Kumadori. None of them. None of the uh, Jabra. Not one extra CP9 member. Not even Spandam. Spandam, I would have accepted Spandam with Funkfried as a weapon, as an opponent, just to be something unique, something different. Caulifla, at the very least, they really skipped out on the female antagonists. I just, I can't believe we didn't get Caulifla or Miss Doublefinger in these first two arcs. Come <laughs> on. Um, so you deal with them, and I believe you have to fight Jabra, or no, no, not Jabra. I wish Jabra was in there. Uh, you have to fight Luchi twice again because he gets juiced up. He gets all juiced. Oh, yeah. And then you, from there, you know, you leave again. You go back to Adio and the rest of Memoria. And you have to deal with these giant Titan things, which are kind of the most entertaining fights. Even though they're these faceless, wordless, giant golem creatures that are very Final Fantasy-esque. Which is fine. I, I really would have preferred a, 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 a unique movie style uh, game only story than this going into these highlighted worlds that I've been in a million times in video games and watched over and over again and read. I don't need to go back to Water 7. I love Water 7, but I don't need to be there. <sighs> I don't want to shit on this game all day because it does have a lot of it does have a lot of potential. It could be something great. If they make a One Piece Odyssey 2, I hope they iron out some of these problems that we keep bringing up. I'm going to be really disappointed if they decide to go with a 2 and uh, it's the same bullshit. Hopefully they won't go back to Alabasta again. At the very least, I just don't want to go back to Alabasta for the rest of my life. Uh uh, for, so from there, from Water 7, you go to Marineford, I believe, and that's the most important, entertaining part of this, is you go to Marineford, and you're thinking, okay, maybe in this memory world, we'll get to save Ace, even though it doesn't matter, because we're in this memory world, and that's the one thing that kept bugging me. The Straw Hat crew was, they just kept doing this thing, we're like, well, we gotta save Alabasta, we've gotta save Water 7, we've gotta save Vivi, we've gotta save uh, Ace, we've gotta save uh, Law, and all these things... But it doesn't matter. We're in a memory world. The real world is where these things actually already happened. None of these characters in this memory world are affected because once you leave, they don't exist anymore. And the Straw Hat crew was treating it like they were in those worlds. So you go to Marineford, you deal with the whole ace scenario, you fight the three admirals. Whitebeard isn't even there until the DLC, which is bullshit. Again, too little, too late. Put Whitebeard in fucking 
Marineford. That is his arc. And you're going to... Why would you do Marineford and not have Whitebeard in it? And a majority of the other characters, uh, like the, the warlords that should have been there as well. Like Boa Hancock should have been there. What is going on with leaving out the female characters? I don't get it. I get you're trying to, you're kind of condense these arcs so you can fit them into these little memory pockets. Uh, and it would have been fine if they kind of said, like, well, this is Luffy's memory, so it's a little spotty. Things are a little different, which I think they kind of did. It just didn't sit well with me the way they did it. They gave you the the very low, low cliff notes of these arcs. And I was just like, Ugh, I've seen this done better in other video games. And it's so stupid that they're doing this this way in this memory world. You know what would have been better is instead of going to Alabasta and Water 7 any Lobby for the thousandth time, we went to Arlong Park. Could you imagine if instead of going to Alabasta, we went to Arlong Park and dealt with the uh, the Nami scenario? But in this version of it, we not only get to fight Arlong, we get to see Hachi, Chu, uh, and the rest of his squad that I can't remember. What, what's his damn name? Um, and you get to see this, the, the fishmen. You fight all the fishmen. That'll be fun. You get to fight Momu. And, and then you get to fight, you know, Arlong. And you've been reduced down to level one because your memories have been taken out. Yeah. So you can unlock a couple moves there. Cool. Well, gum gum pinwheel, right? <laughs> hey. You get to see some cool animated versions of the East Blue, which would be sick, of of uh, Arlong Park destroying it all. That would have been fun. It's been a very long time since Arlong and his squad has been in a video game. That would have been a highlight. That's not even changing the gameplay or, or the outfits or anything. Just taking me to a world that I haven't been to in a while in video game form. Uh, another option, instead of going to Ennis Lobby and Water 7, let's go to Thriller Bark, people. The place where this, uh, this whole idea of turn-based strategy, Final Fantasy gameplay would fit. Yeah, we're going to be fighting hordes of zombies and then ores, ores, this giant motherfucker, which would have been such a cool team battle to have, which would make sense because it happened in the show. Uh, you have ores, you take down ores, and then from there you go on to uh, Gecko Moria, another underutilized character who doesn't show up at all in this game, even at Marineford. Gecko Moria, and you can even throw in Kuma because Kuma's in that arc as well. I say still go to Marineford, but at the very least put Whitebeard in it and Ivan Kov. Jesus, put Ivan Kov in there. Uh, I think you get to team up with Jinbei and Crocodile, which was fun, but it was just short-lived. You don't even get to control Jinbei and Crocodile. They're just there helping you out for a hot minute. Uh, and Jinbei is like in the game, but you can't use them. And again, before I go too far, Frankie, pre-time skip, is in the game and you can't use him. Why design him at all? Why put him in the game at all if you just can't use him? Even though you can use the pre-time skip versions of the rest of the crew if you've got the DLC. <clears throat> Mind-boggling. Still go to fucking Marineford. Uh, try to save Ace. I like that whole scenario. Maybe even save Ace. Have Luffy have this touching moment where he's like, I, at least I got to save you here. But I know in the real world you're not alive, but this feels good. It would have felt good. It would have touched our hearts. Then I think after that, you unlock Frankie. You deal with some more golems. You go into the memory world again. I, I, I think you just go from there to dress a Rosa. Another thing. Why don't, Punk Hazard. We could have went to Punk Hazard and dealt with Caesar and Virgo and Monet. Don't tell me you wouldn't have liked to fight Monet and Virgo. Caesar would have been a fun thing. He could transform into that giant gas thing at the very end. And then the big slime guy, we could have fought him. We could have dealt with Smoker and Tashigi. That's where we could have had Smoker and Tashigi instead of Alabasta. But that's not what happens. Uh, and you go to Dressarosa and you deal with Doflamingo. And now all them. You beat them. You finish that. I think that's it for the, the memory stuff. 
And then you find out that Adio is a fucking asshat that's been trying to unlock this ancient weapon that looks like a giant fish. And it's just like gonna just the divine breath or some shit and he kill or try he shoots Lim the girl you've been traveling with who you bond with who I fucking hate one of the worst uh fa- main good uh protagonist female characters in the entire fucking video game verse of One Piece I hated Lim uh you deal with audio you beat him which is actually pretty challenging once you figure out his stick, though, it's not. You beat him. Then you have to fight the Divine Breath. You beat the Divine Breath. They're gone. And they leave it very ambiguous. They don't even... There's like this crazy buster call happening in the background, which you don't have to deal with at all. No stakes from the real world you have to deal with, except for audio and the Divine Breath. Uh, from there, you leave and you go on to the next adventure. You leave Lim and another real version of Lim. You find out that the Lim that you've been wandering around with, with the blue eyes, is actually a fake memory version. And then there's a real Lim with red eyes and they're buddies. So then there's two of them for some reason, like the two trunks in the Dragon Ball Super Trunks um, Goku Black arc that suck balls. Uh, so they're going to live on Memory Island and build a community or something. And then you jump over the DLC and it's like a pre leaving the island storyline where you're about to have a going away party. Lim gets taken. An evil version of Lim with a black outfit shows up, just a changed color palette. And then she takes you back to Memoria with the red eyed Lim. This all sounds really stupid, I know. You have to go back to Alabasta. In the DLC, you don't get to go anywhere else. Nope. You go back to Alabasta. You go back to Water 7. You go back to Dressarosa. You don't even go back to Marineford because it's not much of a place to go to in the first place. It's one of the shortest arcs and the most, the most entertaining part of the entire game you don't go back to with, with Ace and whatnot. You don't get to control anybody else. You go and fight characters that were in the main game. They add characters that should have been in the main game, like Miss All Sunday and uh, Whitebeard. That's another thing. In the DLC, the final boss really is uh, Anel uh, of characters we know. Anel shows up, or Eneru, and Eneru should have been in the main game. We should have went to Skypea in the game. Skypea fighting the Shandorians and the and the Sky people and and the uh the priests. Oh my god, that would have been a fun uh storyline to revisit in video game form. Jeez, I love Skypea. And the fact that they they shoehorn Eneru into the final fight, one of the final fights of the DLC. At least you get that, I guess. But they don't really explore him at all. He's just like, well, here's Eneru. People like Eneru. He looks like Eminem. You beat him, and then you have to fight this giant cube, because the game's just full of fucking cubes. This giant cube monster, very much uh, Final Fantasy-like. You beat this giant cube, you you save the fucking day, Uh, you free limb from the evil, and then you hit the road. You get back on the road and you're like, see you later. We'll come back someday to see you. We're the Straw Hat crew. We don't ever change our clothes in video games, I guess. And that's the story. And uh, I think the DLC was my favorite part, <laughs> even though it was repetitive as well, except you didn't have to go back and forth. In the DLC, you would just skip to the next section. It was, on, it was more of a story thing than anything else, but it, it just felt half-assed. The game felt half-assed, and uh, I think the, the 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 trailers made it seem like it was gonna whole ass itself, but it was uh, it was very half-assy. Didn't like it. Mm-mm. No, One Piece Odyssey, a big dud. It has a lot of potential. My only positive thing to say about One Piece Odyssey is it's easy, so you can kind of chill out and just play it leisurely, chilling, killing like a villain. Uh, the villain sucks in it. It really does. Uh, one bad antagonist can ruin an entire game. It really can. If the story was good, I could excuse the gameplay. If the gameplay was good, I can excuse the story. But y- you can't give me both bad things. Again, it was fun once. And it took me nearly nine months to, to beat because I would do one 
like an hour or two, and then I'd need to take like a week or two off or a month off. There was a point where a new video game came out and I was like, I'm playing this. This is much more fun. Or I would go back and play uh, Pirate Warriors 4 because it was more entertaining and less repetitive. Isn't that nuts? I even went back and replayed. I replayed uh, One Piece uh, World Red. If you've ever played it, it's very good. It's on the Switch. I beat that again for the second time in between trying to beat One Piece Odyssey because it's so damn repetitive. The story is good in uh, in One Piece uh, World Red because and you go into your memories as well, but it, it's just better. It's better, and there's, there's a main villain who's like a vampire and shit. It's really cool. It, it's not the best game in the world, but it's better than this. <sighs> One Piece Odyssey, I'm going to officially, by the time I got to the end of this, I thought maybe I would think more of it, but really, I think less of it. Four out of ten, two out of five at best. I do not recommend playing this game uh, unless you're just looking for something to do that involves One Piece that you haven't done before. Do it once. Get it on super duper sale. There was at one point I thought it was worth 40 bucks, but at this point I'm thinking 20 20 buckaroos, then you're getting your money's worth, you got a few hours of gameplay, and then you can put it down and never look at it again. If you're going to do this again, people, if we're going to get a One Piece Odyssey 2, which I just do not want if they're going to do this again to me, give me a better story or fix the fucking gameplay. Let's go to places like Thriller Bark, let's go to Skypea, let's go to Punk Hazard, let's go somewhere that we haven't been in a long time in these video games. Let's give me some villains like Eneru, let's give me Gecko Moria and Ors and Perona in the main story, not in the DLC where they already should have been in the main story. And I'm sure people are going to be like, well you just didn't give it a real good chance, did you bud? It took you this long to beat it? No. It kept drawing me out of it. It kept me wanting to stay away from it. And I love One Piece. I'm constantly looking up One Piece stuff to do or look at or read. And this was something I was trying to avidly avoid. But I needed to beat it. You know, I paid for the DLC and everything. So I'm like, I'm going to fucking beat this thing and hope that it gets good. And it, it's, it's average at best. If it came out for the Nintendo Switch... Maybe it'd be okay to play handheld while you're chilling, but on the Xbox when your full attention is on it and it's not that fun to keep your full attention on, it's a bit of a slog. This is more Fanime. What did you think of One Piece Odyssey? Comment down below. What's your favorite One Piece game? Off the top of my head, I'm going to say One Piece uh, Pirate Warriors 4 is the one I put the most hours in because there's a lot to do with a lot of characters to develop, you know, build up their abilities and whatnot. Uh, but I really did enjoy One Piece World Seeker. Personally, if the option was One Piece Odyssey 2 or One Piece World Seeker 2, I'd go One Piece World Seeker 2 every day, twice on Tuesdays. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you later.